All right, so the next part of the assignment is to actually set up a long-term liability account, a notes payable account, and call it by your initials and 2017 bank loan. So one of the things that we have to do is go back to our chart of accounts. We have the chart of accounts under our settings, chart of accounts. Let's see if I have any loans. I don't have any loans. So let's go ahead and create a new account. It's going to be a long-term liability. Let's see if there's any other, um, or specifically, it's a long-term liability of notes payable. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. A long-term liability of notes payable. And that long-term liability is going to be called FP. Everybody has a different name. Very specific, 2017 bank loan. 2017 bank loan. There's no description. Uh, we have to figure out what was the unpaid balance as of 1-1-2018 because that's when we're setting up our books. Right, we're setting up our books as of the 1st of 2018. So we have to use our amortization table to find out what was the balance at the beginning of the year. So the balance at the beginning of the year was 49,165.87. All I got to do is go to the last payment, right? I could have also used the formula uh, cumulative principal paid over a set number of periods, right? I could have said this is my interest rate. Um, and the rate is uh, that divided by 12, obviously. And then the number of payments would have been 60. Um, the present value would have been 59,999. Uh, the, the first period, I mean, the number of payments to begin, the number of payment period to begin to community calculation should have been the first one. So it automatically starts accruing. And the last period, the number of the payment period to end the cumulative. Oh, so we want to make sure that we calculate from the 1st to the 12th. Um, and we are using the end of the month uh, formula. So that means it is accumulating the, pay, the, end, the capital that was paid from period 1 to period 12. Let's just make sure. Yes, from the 1st to the 12th. And that's it. Let me close it. And that would have been 10,833. So if I add 59 plus this, that should give me technically the same amount of 49,165.87. So I technically did not need to do all of this to come up with the amount. So if you are feel more comfortable about doing the cumulative, uh, cumulative principal amount that was paid over 12 payments and then deducted from your original balance, that would have been just as good. But, you know, it's always nice when you have the amortization table for more than that uh, or more than that reference. So as of 1-1-2018, we had $49,165 and $87 um, unpaid for. So I'm going to save and close it. So that's the end of that. Then it says, let's create a journal entry date at 9 28 to record the payment of the last nine months, January to November, right? So... I need to create a journal, but before I do that, I need to find out from January to September, what was paid, what, how much capital was paid. So I could select this and pay them and, and see what the amount is. In this case, it would have been 8487. Or I could do the same formula, right? I could exactly copy this formula and say how much was paid um, from period 13, right, to period um 13 plus 9 would be 21 so to period 21 for the nine months and that's going to tell me how much was paid 8487 with four cents let me make this a dollar sign that was the principle that was paid between the month of january of 2018 all the way to september of 2018 84 87 05 all right, so now that I know that, I also want to know how much interest was accrued. So this is January to September. 
how much interest was accrued as well? Interest was, let me move this over here. This is for um, principal and the interest that was paid. I can use another formula called accumulated um, um, payments. So accumulated interest payments would be accumulated interest payment, QIPMT. Uh, and I do the same thing. I go to the 5% um, div divided by 12. The number of periods would have been 60. The present value would have been 59. The first period that I want to calculate for would be from period 13 to period 21. And again, this gets fit at the end, so that's a zero, right? So what am I getting? I am just getting the sum of all the interest that was paid in 2018 by using that formula. And Or I can just grab my interest expense sales from the from starting with January 2018 and go all the way to September. And that should be the same amount. $1,703.25 should be the same amount as this, right? So if we're doing the calculation correctly, either way, I could come up with that using my table or using my interest, my cumulative interest paid with the cumulative interest payment formula right there. So I know that I used all this cash to pay for the principal and interest as of 9.30. And that's exactly what it's asking us to do right here. Do a journal entry, because that's when we pretty much started doing our, uh, setting up our books. We don't want to do a payment for every month. So let's just do a cumulative entry and we'll do that. And we're also going to do payments for every month after that. So let's do another journal entry. Journal entry would be plus sign journal entry. Um, and I'm going to call this, um, cumulative payment of loan, call it FP loan 2017. All right, so I am paying cash out, so that's gonna be credited. So what will be debited in this, in this sense? Well, the principal amount that was owed, which would be my loan uh, term liability has to be credited in the amount of the principal Eighty four, eighty seven, eighty five, eighty four to reflect to record the payment of principal from January to September twenty eighteen. Right. What else got paid? Well we paid our interest for seventeen oh three twenty five. So let me just do seventeen oh three. Uh, 25, and that would be for interest expense. Huh, we don't have interest expense then. Interest, well then let's add it, interest expense. And interest expense, this is a expense account of interest paid. I'm going to call it interest expense, save and close. Notice that I didn't have to reopen my chart of accounts. I could just do it on the spot as we go. And this is to record the payment of interest for this loan. Okay, perfect. That's it. And to balance this, this came out of my cash. I'm assuming that I had my main checking, 10,190. And let's just go back and see if that's the case. You know, if I select all the way to the 21st, all the payments I made from that account from January to September, that should match my amortization table, $10,190.30. And that is correct. So I can save this and close it. And I'm done with my journal entry for that. Now I can move on to do the next, uh, create three check EFT transactions to record the 1031, 1130, and 1231, 2018 payments. So let's just do that 
uh, next. Let me stop the video right, right here.